Hello, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. Uh, another one, just on the back of that last podcast about, I think I was talking about space. Um, and I think the reason why I was talking about that at the end, um, I know it was a bit of a random thought, but it was also just connected with how we can train anyone, anything. We can, you know, when people say we can't change the system, but remember we're all born as babies with blank canvases and we fill them up with all the information, the template um, of the system. And that's true with space. Space, you know, my three-year-old has an image of space and they're based on this animation, based on you know, not actual real pictures, not actual his five senses being able to to look at them and, and you know, experience it. He's never going to do that. Um, and as he grows up, it's more of those images are going to come and then, you know, if anyone challenges him in the future and says, well, I don't think space is anything like that. I don't think that planet really looks like that. He's going to say, no, it does. And he will be so firm and adamant about it. He will get angry about it. And like you do when you see, you know, when there's these conversations between flat earthers and, and ball earthers. Because how do you unprogram a program, which is what we are. We are like AI, but it's just, we, we see this as natural but we are programmed, we're schooled. And like I'm saying, he will never experience space. It's not like the rainforest where you can, you know, he might be able to go there or he, and he'll see actual photos, not digital representations. A lot of the, the NASA stuff and etc. is data that is then extrapolated and created into imaging, colours that add in, all sorts of things. You know, you can find that all on YouTube. So that's not, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. You, they, you will have a concept of something that is so hard to break and yet you don't really know what it's like and it's just an interesting thought when you think about that when you actually like as I'm experiencing it as a parent I'm experiencing these uh, these things where they're getting them from and when he says like oh this is space and this is just the beginning and in the future he will have a definitive what space is and he'll see lots of Star Trek and Doctor Who and etc and Sky at night and these NASA programs where they use animations and they don't bother to put up this is an animation this isn't actually an actual photo taken with an actual SLR or digital camera this is some kind of data extrapolation that is then formed into something and who knows whether that forming is is accurate or not you know when you get a telescope and you get so disappointed and you see space and you see this little dot and that's neptune or whatever or venus and yet when you see venus on sky and night all these programs it's like this beautiful planet this but these these images of of them are, are, are usually animations <laughs> but you don't realize that because we're so used now especially now like when i was growing up yeah, you could see it, but now everyone's used to animation, and the animation looks so much like real life. You know, when you get things like Avatar and uh, Lion King, uh, the new one, you can see how possible it is to create real places and things that actually look as almost as real as the real. And obviously, people being brought up in this generation won't have the, you know, like the people in the past where they can see the evolution of animation, the evolution of this kind of technology. But anyway, what I wanted to really talk about was also this idea that if I ever, in these podcasts ever went to someone of the system, you know, government, etc., they would laugh at these things and I'm sure there'd be ad hominem attacks and stuff like that because they, they would say, well, you, you can't change. How are we going to change the 7 billion people's minds? How are we going to change and have a new template? How, how are we going to do this? Because, well, I, I don't know whether we have to change 7 billion minds or we just have to change... I don't know, one million minds, the, the leaders of the world, the constructors, the businessmen, the, the, the people with the money that are behind all these things, uh, those people, is it just those people we have to change and then the rest of us like sheep will just follow because we are sheep in, in essence after we're schooled, we follow that system and we, we will fight for it no matter whether we believe it or know to believe it or not because we don't even care about knowledge, we care about belief. Um, we can, you know, when you look at the religion, etc., we can, and even space, you can make people believe whatever you want them to believe as long as the consensus is, is by everyone, whether that's the truth or not is, is another matter, same as you'll get different countries will believe like America is bad, say North Korea, or other people will say it's good and etc. That's all uh, a, a cultural thing that you can easily uh, do and if you think about it you know these people are laugh and say well we can't get rid of money I, I don't know whether if we got rid of money would that solve all our problems I don't think it would solve all of them but it may 
go a big way about it that would change it well it would be a domino effect to change the concept of how we all ex live and exist because we we would no longer need maybe all these extra things and uh, uh and etc and yeah i'm sure there'd be a lot of people who would take advantage of that but there's people who take advantage of the system as it is in anyway but the fact is that those people who laugh and say well we can't change this or this is the best system that we have no it's not the best system we have because people are dying and suffering if there's you know like i say if there's like one people even if there's how many it's thousands ten thousand people that are suffering around the world then i don't like using that word around the world um, then that's not a system that's working. Yeah, it's working for you because you're in a rich, affluent country, but it's not working for the poor people who are being kept poor in a, in, in a, either by purpose or, or just by the system, the lack of the understanding that why don't we all have exactly the same as each other when we could do because we all have the same resources and we're all human beings. And then, of course, when you look at it, if you look at the changes that have happened through civilization, there's been lots of them. You know, you could say, oh, okay, we can't get rid of money. Well, wait a minute. You just look about 100 years ago when slavery was allowed or, or, or people who were gay were, were arrested or put in prison or worse. And I know this still happens in some places, but look how it's, uh, it's changed. Over a hundred years, a lot of countries have adopted pride, have adopted uh, gay rights or LGBT plus Q, uh, whatever it is currently. All these things have been adopted around the world. Um, you know, uh, ab abolition of slavery. It started in one country, it's spread around. The, the idea of racism, it's starting to move across to different countries. The, you know, these things... Uh, women's rights, women being allowed to vote, women being allowed to drive, women being allowed to have equal pay, equal jobs, the same job, etc. Uh, education, all these things. They're, they're, they, they were once things where people would say, well, they're never going to change. And, you know, the, it, it, and people who were on the, the side of wanting this change would have seen it as a very uphill battle, but it happened. So it's not impossible to, to make change. I don't know how, who it is you have to galvanize to make those changes. Yeah, it's taken time and not, none of these are, are complete, but it, it, the change has happened. Um, but what made that, I mean, I suppose we'd have to research what, what made the, 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 the gay movement or what made the abolition of slavery, what was it that actually, because lots of people have tried to get rid of these things or change these things and it didn't work. Um, so what is it, who is it that made these differences? How did they make these differences? Because then maybe we can work on that and use that as a way. Is it because it becomes the pressure? Because it's not to do with it's the right thing to do. Anyone who says, oh, it's because everyone suddenly decided, yeah, it was the right thing to do. Bullshit. No, it's nothing to do with that. Uh, people are told what's the right thing to do. And, you know, and maybe through schooling it did, it eventually broke through. But I don't believe that, you know, people didn't just suddenly wake up. Because when you see the films of how they got rid of the abolition of slavery, you know, when, the, I can't remember his name, he was vote, uh, everyone in the, in, the, in the British Parliament was against him, you know. Uh, but he managed to get it through eventually um, by changing their minds. But it took time. So what I mean is, is these people with mindsets will always have these mindsets. And to ch get them to see the right thing is very, very difficult. So I don't know. Is it because certain people got influenced? You know, once you get someone who's very powerful, like the Prime Minister or the American President or Bill Gates or, or someone who's powerful, those people we don't know about that, uh, you know, put the money into these political parties. Or I don't know who are the people that make these changes to our system, to the template that it is, because that's the people we need to influence to, to looking at the world as it is and getting a new template where there isn't suffering, where there isn't poverty, where there isn't starvation on a planet that we live on that does have enough food and, and resources for everyone. Everyone could live in an America. You know, if we say America is the most technological advance, or it's China, whoever it is, whoever, whichever country has the most uh, infrastructure, you know, maybe the uh, UK when it comes to hospitals and things like that, all these things that they that these countries have, the best of all of them could be for every that could be everyone's country, you know, wouldn't need like Colombia having to suffer or or, or Mexico or Nigeria or whoever, you know, Somalia. There's you know some of the things that you know uh, natural, but those things we can get around as well. You know, if the place isn't suitable for, for human uh, living, then we can move. There's plenty of space for everyone. There's plenty of resources. There's plenty of um, everything, food. 
There's no need for anyone to starve. Imagine that. You, you know that people are still starving. People are dying when I'm doing this podcast of starvation on a, on a planet that has enough food for every single one of us times. I don't know what the number is, but it's a lot. I mean, that's shameful. It is shameful, isn't it, that people are suffering unnecessarily, because it is unnecessarily, because the infrastructure and everything, you know, what makes America, America is the people that they're trained to be able to build bridges, they're trained to be able to make hospitals. China, look how they made that hospital in the COVID time. You know, people are trained to do these things. That That's just knowledge. And knowledge, everyone has the capacity, you know, somehow more than others, but there's enough of those people around. You could uh, train those uh, everyone so that they could build and that we could all be equal. But the, the, the truth is those affluent countries like the West don't want everyone to be equal. They will say it, but they won't do what's necessary to make it happen. And that's not good enough. We don't want fucking words. Words are no good. What we need are deeds and actions. If you believe that it's unfair that people suffer, if you're a prime minister or president and you're you know, making these big uh, speeches, passionate speeches, then do it. Don't just say it. Because the problem is, is you keep these countries in debt. You keep them repaying things because of money. They've lent you money for war or for, or for famine and they give you money and then they charge you debt on it. And of course, the debt is more than the, uh, the, the, the aid that these countries give. So it always keeps them perpetually poor. They know how to build houses. You know, the Americans, the British, the West, China, whoever, Russia, the Saudi Arabia, they all know how to build infrastructure. They all know how to make the template the best it can be. So why don't they just do it for other the countries and help them out as their brothers and sisters especially when a lot of these people are religious and believe in this concept of us all being children of God well if we're all children of God why are you allowing some of them not to be equal because that's what's happening because you have all the things that you need to make it happen so why aren't you doing it because you well some will say well, it's restrictions of money but wait a minute that's a man-made concept get rid of it then if it's causing that much trouble the problem is, I know, you know, then how do you, one person thinks about it, say if I was the president or prime minister, how would I convince all the other leaders? Because all of them want to be above. All of them don't want to be below. None of them want to be equal. <laughs> take care, take it easy. God bless and peace.